national security is top of mind for most all of us right now as the war in Ukraine rages on and other conflicts happen all around the world. And while we don't know exactly how that all will affect us here in the United States or our security, we're trying to find answers. And of course, the new institute, institute at Austin P. at Fort Campbell, the uh, Institute of uh, Military Studies, I'm sorry, of National Security and Military Studies, is, is going to be a, hopefully a big part of that. And joining us today via Zoom is the inaugural director of that institute, Dr. Matthew Croston. Thank you so much for joining us here on WAPXFM uh, 91.9 and also APSU TV. Thanks. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. So, you know, so Matthew, you've had a lot of travel, extensive travel as part of your studies and research. Please talk to us first a little bit about how that uh, travel has, has influenced you um, and, and helped you become the, the researcher you are. Oh, I think probably the best, the best way I can describe that is just to give a story with uh, the very first job I had coming out of graduate school when I left Brown University my first position was at Clemson University, not too far from where Austin P is really. And I had a senior faculty member there pull me aside and said, I just want to explain to you that you, know, you had one of your recommendations say something and they're pretty standardized these things. And, and the fact that this recommender said something that I had never heard before really made an impact on me and really favored your candidacy. And that person simply explained you want to have Dr. Crossan with you, with your department, simply because he wants to go to the places that most of us are afraid to go to. <laughs> he's interested in the places that most of us would never dare go and, and follow up on. And I've always remembered that. I've always used that as an inspiration for my own studies, for my own research projects. Uh, and I've tried to live up to that recommendation ever since. Uh, and that's sort of really what has powered what has been a pretty fascinating uh, and interesting career that I think has hopefully culminated now with me joining Austin P and leading the new institute. Right, and you've done extensive research, of course, as part of your travels, um, research on, and again, I got just a glimpse of, of the huge uh, amount of, of work that you've done, uh, academic journal articles on things like um, uh, terrorism, deterrence, uh, cyber um, security, of course, and then drones, and drones used in combat and in, in engagement in war. Uh, how has all your research helped prepare you for this position, which of course is, is hugely important given the proximity and of course, you know, Fort Campbell um, being right. a large part of this? I've always lived uh, a sort of dual life uh, in, in my approach to my career in that I've always tried to hold the highest academic standards possible, whether it be in my teaching or in my research, but I've also been extremely conscious of real world applicability about producing things that are relevant and can impact actual policy, influence policy makers, be important for the practitioners, whether they're in the governmental, the military, or the intelligence community. Uh, bridging those two worlds, which quite, quite traditionally have always tended to be very separate in America and American higher education, has meant a lot to me. I think it's impacted my career in ways I can almost, almost really not calculate. And I think it will inform a huge part of the mission that we are going to set for the Institute in the, in the simple sense that we will have absolutely for us and the new faculty members will be bringing in uh, the highest of standards in terms of producing new knowledge, contributing uh, to our disciplinary fields in an academic sense, but also be doing events and other products that will be of relevance to the real world, that it will impact what's going on on an everyday level and people won't have any doubt as to why we're here and how we're contributing, hopefully positively, uh, to how the world evolves. Right, and speak a little bit more to that mission. Um, again, that's a three-pronged mission, as you mentioned. Obviously, the educational programs for those um, who may be enlisted and non-enlisted, of course, and then also the community interaction, reaching out to the community too. And of course, as you mentioned, bringing in um, and you know the interdisciplinary research into that factor too. So how do those all together work to create a very unique learning center that the Institute will be? For me, it isn't even so much about how well we can fuse these together. It's really just simply about the vibrance of the place we create right, is that we, we need to have the Institute be something where anyone who hears anything about it, they instantly have certain things come to mind. Really fascinating classes, a really engaging and challenging degree program, 
uh, starting with the bachelor's degree, which is already approved and, and beginning at Austin P. But ultimately, I see no reason why we won't ultimately evolve and grow to where we'll have probably graduate degrees as well. And then having a really active social and event calendar that everybody, everybody finds fascinating. That's one of the things I mentioned uh, during my own interview process. I said that the, the funny thing is, is whether you consider yourself an expert or not, whether you consider yourself well-read or closely following the news, the reality is everything that we'll be doing and everything that we'll be connected to at the Institute, almost everyone in the world has an opinion on it. Whether it's counterterrorism, whether it's the Ukraine conflict, whether it's the EU, whether it's NATO, whether it's cyber warfare, uh, go, the list is endless, literally infinite. Uh, that's a real challenging but inspiring responsibility to me, is to make a place that does great work, has real impact, but is also always incredibly interesting to Austin P, to Fort Campbell, to the state of Tennessee, and moving on beyond so that we are truly recognized and seen as a global institute. Right, and I want to speak to that Global Institute in just a minute, but those who may just be tuning in to uh, join us here at 91.9 and, and APSU TV, I'm Micah Terrell, and I'm, I'm with Dr. Matthew Cross, and he's the inaugural director of the APSU National Security and Military Studies Institute. And very interesting uh, mention here, of course, you were, as you mentioned, you were trying to uh, set this institute apart at, as at the state level, but obviously now we're looking global here. Um, how, how do you plan to, to reach that vision of, of getting a great global reputation? One of the, I, I, I want us to first and foremost maximize the unique position we have in that we have our own standalone building on post at Fort Campbell. Uh, that's a unique opportunity that I don't want us to go to waste. We have uh, also some very generous uh, funding and support, financial support from the state and from the university that we have to maximize and, and make into truly sustainable efforts and initiatives that just go on for years and years to come and constantly producing new events and new product. Uh, most important though, I think is the investment in our technologies and our pedagogical tools, most importantly, within the Institute building itself. I have a vision and I think we're getting there. It's early yet, early days, but I, I have a, a good sense that we'll accomplish having almost what you'd consider a, a global newsroom within the Institute itself that will have connectivity opportunities for us where we are literally holding events on a global scale where maybe we're holding something for the Austin P community, but that community is going to be interacting inside of the Institute with universities from China, from Russia, from England, uh, from governmental agencies that are in Brussels or down in South America. All those possibilities exist. Creating those collaborative networks that are on a truly global scale has been something that's always been a major part of my career and something I really pushed hard in coming to Austin P as, an, as a way to set apart the Institute in terms of what it does and the types of activities it engages. Very interesting too. And of course, a very unique position, the Institute being on, on a post like that. How will the Institute, obviously with the uh, Fort Campbell divisions, many of them uh, rapid deployment type divisions, how will the uh, Institute work with them in support of those, um, those troops who, again, may have to leave at a moment's notice? How will that Institute support them? I think for the most part, when it comes at, and certainly in terms of educational programs, uh, Whenever you deal, and this is not unique to any one institution, but you just become very adept at understanding the, the real life situation of your, of your student community when it's, when it's military students. So you just have to be willing to work with them in terms of their scheduling, in terms of their absences, in terms of whether they have to leave temporarily and then come back, or can they arrange to have opportunities abroad? Where And, and we intend with the Institute, obviously, the first launching of the bachelor's program, for example, will be online at first. And that's largely to help accommodate these types of issues that we're going to probably have in the very beginning. And, and that's just this flexibility and this adaptability to always look to accommodate students so that they don't have to quit and leave. And then maybe, maybe down the road, they'll come back. Because we've seen time and again, that usually doesn't happen. You, you have to find ways to help them help themselves so that they can stay without feeling like they're falling too far behind or that they're, they're disadvantaging themselves by, well, I'm getting deployed, but I'm gonna stay with the, 
I'll stay with the program, but I'm probably not going to do well and I won't have as much time. You have to just work with us. And, I, and that's what we'll have is the spirit informing the mentor relationship in the Institute is that as, as challenging as we'll be, as rigorous as we'll be, we'll also have a human face on the Institute as well. And everyone who comes to us will know it and feel it. And that's a great, I'm sure very reassuring because as you said, a lot of um, a troops and their families, they just don't know you know, from month to month. So being able to have that flexibility of, of doing things online is, is very helpful. And if you could please speak a bit more to uh, that, the new degree, could you tell us a little bit about what uh, sort of focus uh, the, the degree will have and are some of the samplings that um, students can look forward to when they take that course, the courses? There's, it's, it's very exciting to me in the simple sense that uh, we have a set degree program right now uh, that we, we push through when it came to just uh, the Higher Education Commission and things like that. But we've always accepted and we've always expected that this degree will also evolve over time, that will take into account uh, the, the numerous surveys and evaluations. This will be a living, vibrant degree and not something that's just simply sort of stagnant in stone, as I like to say. So the fact is that we'll have classes when you think about them and read about them that just seem truly immersive truly engaging, truly fascinating, whether you're talking about, there's a, a, a course I'm really excited about called Chaos Politics. And Chaos Politics is going to look at uh, rogue leaders and outlaw states. Uh, there's another class that deals with transnational crime and corruption. There'll be a class dealing with hard, soft, and smart power. Uh, these are intelligence and counterintelligence, the, the foundational strategies of national security uh, the, whole, the degree program will run the gamut of every type of knowledge you need to know if you're looking to study and become an expert in national security military studies. But most importantly to me is I think students will find these classes to not just be difficult, they'll be difficult, but really, really interesting to take. They'll really enjoy the things that they're reading. They'll really get a lot out of them. And for our military students or just simply students who are interested in pursuing a career in national security or military studies, they'll see almost immediately that every class they take, even at that undergraduate bachelor's level, those classes, they'll immediately understand how they're relevant to a career in those fields. They'll see the path that they're starting to build toward actionable careers. And I think that's a really important thing in today's higher ed American higher education, where at the undergraduate level, we quite frankly have a lot of people criticizing universities for undergraduate degrees that end up having nothing at all to do with what students are employed in after graduation. That won't be the case with the Institute. That won't be the case with the National Security Studies degree at Austin P. Uh, these degrees, even at an undergraduate level, will produce graduates that leave Austin P and go straight into the fields that are connected, directly connected to national security and military studies. And I'm both proud and really, really excited about that. And we're really excited too because that's amazing to have a again a whole institute dedicated to uh, that kind of work because as you mentioned it's it's great to study something that you know will immediately have an application in real life right away so we really appreciate that well, the work that you're doing and that your faculty and staff are doing so if, if anyone's interested uh, dr croston how can they learn more about the, the new institute and the degree program uh, there uh, well, we're actually right, right now, literally as we speak, we're, we're hard at work building a, a very strong website and sort of virtual presence on Austin P's website. So I think in the very near future, they can just simply look up the Institute on Austin P's website, uh, or uh, if they have the opportunity, if they're already on post, uh, they're always more than welcome simply to come visit us. <laughs> uh, and we're easy enough to find, uh, whether it be in person or virtually through email, uh, they'll find that they'll get a response almost immediately. Wonderful. Well, Dr. Crossan, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us, and we look forward to seeing more research from you and seeing your students' research as well. And again, we thank you so much for joining us here um, on WAPX-FM and also APSU-TV. And again, if you just tuned in, thank you for joining us. This is Micah Terrell, and again with um, 91.9 at Public Affairs and APSU-TV.